Tonight we're going to get a really strong word on helping us fight, not just COVID, but any spiritual battle that you're in. You know, life is full of battles and there's so many people getting defeated by those battles. That means in a, in a battle, spiritual battle, relationship battle, this is what happens. There's winners and losers. And with Christ, the Bible says that we're more than conquerors or it's actually saying that we're more than winners, that God wants us wants us to win. He's prepared a way for us to win. But the Bible also describes that we're in a fight of faith. That means it is actually a fight or it's a battle and we need to learn how to fight the battles we're in or the depression takes over or the fear takes over or our ministries are taken over or maybe a a sin takes over our lives. So the the enemy's always doing everything he can to take us over. And COVID COVID has basically been a big takeover. Yeah, it sure has. Takeover of our whole society, the whole world, the the agenda, um, our our conversations, our health, uh, our emotions. It's been a real big spiritual battle that we're in. So tonight... We're going to be discussing that, and right around this, we have some 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 people that have actually gone through COVID, yeah, and and it. they're going to tell a little bit about their story and how they got through it, and 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 some of these stories you're going to hear were very hard. It was difficult, yeah. but God will yeah. never give us more than we can handle, that's right. and that's why the Bible says, and I love Psalms 23, where it says, "Though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I won't fear any evil, evil. because I'm recognizing something. I'm in a valley." I'm, I am fighting a real challenge, but I'm recognizing God is with me and his rod and his staff comfort me. And at the end, he prepares a table in front of my enemies. You know what that means? Victory celebration. So we're going to learn how to get some victory celebrations. I'm going to show you tonight how to fight every spiritual battle. Man, I can't wait to dive into this word and hearing these stories tonight. Before we um, go into this word or hear some of these great testimonies, um, I want to start off with some prayer. Um, um, Coronavirus is real. Um, We just seen this week some very sad news. Um, An associate pastor uh, from Water of Life Church passed away the last couple uh, the last couple days of COVID. Um, Generations Church right down the street. Um, their senior pastor um, passed away of COVID. So we can lift up those churches, those leaders. And what the enemy meant for harm, God is going to turn it around for good. But if you can, let's bow our head and let's close our eyes. And maybe you're at home right now. Doesn't matter what battle you're facing. Today, you will overcome in Jesus' name. But let's pray. Father, we come before you. And we thank you for this beautiful night that we have. They're coming to your presence once again. Here now in this auditorium, but now in our homes, in our workplaces. Maybe somebody's watching us right now from a hospital bed. Father, we thank you that your word will go forth tonight. People would get saved, healed, delivered, and set free. We lift up, Lord, Water of Life Church right now, Lord, with the tragic news they heard about one of their associate pastors passed away. Lord, be with Pastor Danny Carroll. Be with Water of Life and the leadership. Be with the pastor's wife for comfort and for peace. And we thank you, God, that Water of Life is going to another level. And we thank you, Lord, you're giving Pastor Danny, Father, just, just wisdom, how to navigate his church through this tough time, God. We look at Generations Church, Lord, you'd bless them, that you would take care of them. Right now, they're just looking for a a new senior pastor, God. You'd give them wisdom. Give comfort to his wife as well, and to that whole congregation, and to their leadership, and to their staff. And Father, we thank you. Anybody else that's watching right now, that's dealing with a sickness, that's dealing with a hard time, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We speak victory and healing. Father, we thank you. Have your way tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we hear these great stories, Pastor Mark, we have a word. And you can see this word on your app. You'll have the notes on there. There's actually some fill in the blanks. You can follow along. But Pastor Mark, you want to talk about tonight winning the spiritual battle against COVID, but not only COVID, winning every spiritual yeah. battle that we face. Well, it's the same, it's the same fight, whether you're fighting uh, sickness or you're fighting a trial or depression or anxiety. It, it really doesn't matter what fight you're in. It could be a loss of a loved one and you're fighting, you're, you're fighting that, that grip of loss and you say, man, how, how can I get through this season? But life is full of battles like that. And, and we shouldn't count it strange that we go through battles or struggles and, 
And, and I think one of the ways to get defeated is you start taking on a victim mentality. Maybe right. you start saying, why me? Well, this is what I found out. Christians get sick. That's right. Christians go through trials. Right. Um, God actually, the word of God promises that in this life you will have tribulations. Right. And we shouldn't count it as something that's strange. It's part of the battle. It's kind of like someone joining the army and, and they're actually in a war. I said, whoa, why are we in war? That's what you were trained for. Right. But the difference is that God has set this up that if we trust in him and we put him in the middle of our battle, this is what he guarantees us, that we will have victory. So no matter what you're facing right now, there might be someone I'm talking to, you're in the hospital bed right now and you're fighting for every breath and God is saying, keep fighting, I am with you, you're gonna get through this thing and you're gonna come out with a testimony. That's the truth. We have people on this panel that have actually been in the hospital and, and they're here today sharing their story. Why do we have them here today? Because that same God that was with them in their hospital room while they were struggling for their next breath is the same God that's with you right now. I know you're fighting and I know it's difficult, but it's not over. I'm going to read a story in the Bible that maybe you've never heard. And, and, and you say, Pastor, what? Well, how you, are you that confident? I've never heard of the story. Um, I'm pretty confident you've never heard of the story because I've read the whole Bible and this story just, I just, I don't know how I skipped it. Right. And, and there's stories that sound fam familiar to this one, but I've, ne I've never heard this exact story. It's a story about a name, a man named Ananias. Have you ever heard of Ananias? And some of you say, well, I think Ananias. No, not him. <laughs> Ananias. There's a man named Ananias. Ananias in the Bible, and he received a huge miracle, and he was under severe spiritual warfare for a long period of time. It's so easy to overlook those that have been struggling, uh, that have been struggling for years. Right. You know, we have a member of our, our church that she's, you know, been in a wheelchair, you know, really her whole life, and struggling, surgery after surgery, her name's April, surgery after surgery, she's fighting every single day for her breath, for her life, for her yeah. praise. Yeah. And it's so easy to overlook people like that and say, well, you know, it's, and you're not even thinking about them. It's not, you don't think about their battles. And, and we go through battles and most of us are going through temporary battles. That means they're a month at a time, two months at a time, a week at a time, or a couple days. And we almost get overwhelmed, but we need to learn how to fight whatever battle you're in. People are looking at you and it's not just about what you're going through. It's people are seeing how you face the same exact struggles they're facing and they want to see, is there any difference with God in your life or not having God in your life? So it's really important, part of our testimony. So look at, let's look at this story, Ananias. Look at this. It's in Acts chapter 9, verse 32. Take some notes. I'm going to give you five ways to win the spiritual battle against COVID or five ways to win every spiritual battle that you're facing. I just put COVID in there because that's just what we're facing, but, but it could be anything that you're facing today. But Acts 9.32, it says this, Meanwhile, Peter traveled from place to place. I'm going to read you the whole story. And he came down to visit the believers in the town of Lydda. There he met a man named Ananias, who had been paralyzed and bedridden for eight years. Years. He was paralyzed for eight long years, bedridden for eight years. We don't know how he got paralyzed, but for eight years, he was, he's a man. So it means he wasn't born paralyzed. He became paralyzed. And from that moment when he got paralyzed, he was in that bed for eight years. And not like today, we got TVs, we got beds that move, you got nurses. He was in a bed back in the day where, you know, most likely he was on a mat. It wasn't real bad. It was a mat on the hard floor. He couldn't walk. He couldn't move. There were no bathrooms. It was a tough, tough eight years. And in verse 34, Peter said to him, now Peter is visiting this town and Peter meets up with this man and he's paralyzed for eight years and Peter looks at him and he starts speaking to him. He, and I don't even think it was a long conversation. You're, you're paralyzed. I don't even think that happened. I think it was just this. Ananias, Jesus Christ, heals you. Powerful. Wow. Get up yeah. and roll up your sleeping mat. Yeah. And he was instantly healed. Amen. And verse 35 says this, then the whole population, the whole population, not some of the population, but the whole population. You know what that means? Everybody in town 
everyone, everyone of Lida and Sharon saw an Ananias walking around and they turned to the Lord. We're talking about a man that went through a trial for eight years and at the end of that trial, he didn't know why he was going through it. Most likely he was a believer. And you would think at that moment, you could say, I'm a believer and I got COVID. I'm a believer and I'm going through this trial. Why me? Uh, well, I don't think he knew. But at the end result of this experience of eight years being paralyzed, it was a long eight years, but it was worth it all. Because after he was healed, after he was delivered, after the victory, it wasn't just a victory for him. Two whole cities, the whole city turned to believe, I mean, was saved, and they believed in Jesus Christ. And, and what I want you to know, and I'm probably doing the last point first, but point number five, you know, says this, that, that we have to really just know, I just want to say it now, because don't forget, it's all about God being glorified and souls being saved. Yeah. Don't, it's all about God being glorified and soul being saved. That means go through a trial, but get a bigger picture. Yeah. I'm not just going through this for me. I'm going through this to allow someone to see God in a trial so they can know God. And most of all, get saved. There's no purpose to go through a trial if you don't want to glorify God in that trial. Yeah. There's no purpose of going through a trial if you're not focused on seeing people get saved. Don't go through a trial and keep your testimony yeah. to yourself. Get your come on, get yourself out of that bed and start preparing yeah. for your testimony right now. This is your season. If God did it for Ananias, he could do it for you. Yeah. So now let's look at this story and let's break it down verse by verse. In the first verse, it says that 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 Peter traveled from place to place and he came down to visit the believers. And I want to focus on the word believers. Um, this is a major way how you overcome every single battle that you're in. Number one, surround yourself with believers. Surround yourself with believers. A believer is someone that's devoted to God, someone that serves God, we're talking about a worshiper, someone that's placed their faith in Jesus Christ. Someone that we're not talking about someone that's casual, a no, casual Christian. No. We're not talking about a church attender. We're talking about a holy saint of God that's committed to God, yes. knows God. Because when you're in a battle, you can't afford to have weak people around you right. because they'll convince you of the weakness instead of focusing you on your God, which is your strength. That's right. And I remember when I when I went through a battle with with my daughter and I and, and she had cancer and I had two daughters in the hospital. I need to surround myself with believers. That's and right. and this was the that. truth. Yeah. When someone would come in that room, I go, look, let me tell you something. And I'll be very straight. I'm in a battle right now for my daughter's life. That's right. So so you don't we don't come in this room, say anything let negative, and let right. me tell you what I'm believing for. I'm believing that she's gonna come out of this bed whole. Uh, free and cancer free Amen. we're believing yes. that so if you if right. you cannot say anything that doesn't agree with that or this is not a road for you right. say pastor man that's pretty aggressive well i'm fighting for my daughter's life that's right that's and it. this is why some of us can't get victories because the enemy isolates you yeah. and god is saying they say well i got covid i gotta be uh, isolated no you can still call people you can still text yeah. people yeah. you can still contact people don't let the enemy isolate you and kill you that's right surround that's yourself right. with some believers someone say believers believers you know and i believe this there's a spirit yeah, there with covid to isolate right, us isolate and, and 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 get us to a point that we'll never that's come exactly, to church again that's exactly there's right. gonna that's be some happening. people they'll never go to church again they'll go to walmart again <laughs> they'll go to their job again that's right and you understand everywhere yeah. they go covid's over there too that's right covid already visited walmart yeah, that's exactly COVID right. already visited your job. I mean, it's right. been all it's all over the place. That's exactly right. It's go, it visited the NBA and it oh, visited yeah. NFL. the NFL and it visited the baseball stadiums. Yeah. We're trying to keep it out, but COVID's going everywhere. Yeah, it visited right. China. It visited every nation in the world. Every nation in the world, COVID's visited. That's exactly right. But that's but the right. enemy will kind of this is what he'll want to do: keep us isolated. Yeah. Because if he keeps you isolated, this is what happens. He could keep on. 
he could keep you in a place where he speaks to you and gives you, yeah. you're giving him the undivided attention That's for right. him to pollute your mind and destroy you. That's nah, exactly because right. I know when I'm going through a battle, the devil tries to speak, but thank God I got yes. a wife that loves God. Thank God I'm in a church on a Wednesday night Woo. that's speaking the word of God. Thank God that the same God that, that Peter yes. spoke about, yes. that same Jesus that he sp spoke to Ananias and said, yes. Ananias, yes. Jesus heals you. Get up right now. Yes. I love that I'm hearing this word yes. because God is telling someone right now, it's time for you to get up, stop laying down, yep. rise up out of your pity party and fight the fight of faith. Yes, amen. So number one, let's let's man. do this. I let's so, let's surround ourselves Surround with, yourself with some believers. believers. Surround yourself with what? Believers. 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 You know, um, when I surround myself with believers, I'm surrounding myself with agreement partners. Yes, that's it. When I surround myself with believers, I'm surrounding myself with what? Agreement, agreement partners. partners. And I want you to get this. When two believers agree on anything, the supernatural yes. power of God is released yes. in every circumstance they agree with. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know, I'm not the sh sharpest knife in the drawer. That means I'm not the yeah, smartest the guy. The and neither is Pastor Robert. I nope. mean, none of us are. Nope. <laughs> but this is what we do have going on. Because when we started this church, I had no experience about no. starting a church. No, but it doesn't matter. This is what matters. We were at least in agreement. In agreement. Because if two believers agree... Concerning anything, God. it will be done. Look at the scripture. Right, I'm just right. adding the scripture here yeah, for, for our help to understand this. Surround yourself with agreement, agreement partners. Someone say agreement partners. Agreement partners. In Matthew 18, 19, it says, again, I say to you. Who say? Who, who again, again, I say, I say to, you. to you. Jesus. Jesus. Someone say, Jesus is saying Jesus. to me. Jesus. And I love this. Again, I say to you personally. I'm yes. talking to you yes. through the TV. God, Jesus saying, not me. Mark was not saying this. Again, I say to you. you. I'm talking to you. Yes. And he says as this. That if two believers, if, conditional two statement. Believers. If two believers agree, Three. that is, are in one mind and in harmony. Wow. About anything they ask within the will of God, it will be done for them. By my wow. Father in heaven. Wow. That, that is powerful. That's why the enemy wants to bring division between brothers and sisters, oh, between people. Yeah. There's no power. Oh, he's, he's divided people from the church. Man. And this is how he does it. The devil has agreement partners too. Yeah. So you got to be right. careful that instead of agreeing with a believer, you're agreeing, you're agreeing with a divider right. or agreeing, wow. agreeing with a doubter. Wow. Because, see, when you agree with God, with a believer, the supernatural power, the Father Father in heaven releases miracles. That's right. Amen. But when you start agreeing with a doubter, agreeing with a divider, agreeing with a negative person, this is what happens. The enemy comes into your life and destroys the atmosphere of miracles. Right. So you need to be very, very careful that when you're in a battle, you're not surrounding yourself with a whole bunch of negative people. Negative. You're better to be on by yourself and agree with the Holy Spirit than even have two or three people around you that are negative. Wow. I want Wow. There are some people, Robert, yeah, that when you're going through something, oh, yeah. they, they're not coming to give you mercy. No they're coming to finish you off. That's right. But they act yeah. nice. Yeah. They act nice, but it's like a snake coming. That's right. They, I mean, yeah. they act nice, but they got poison. They finish you off. You got to be careful. That's right. I want to surround myself. Even if it's a few believers, few I'm believers. surrounding myself with That's some it. believers. Amen. Love it. Look, Amen. If you ask anything, they ask. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Yes, amen. Wow. Right. Outcome of believers agreeing is simple. It will be done for them. Yes. The outcome from agree, uh, believers agreeing will be what? Done for them. When you're going through a battle, find someone that believes in your God yes. and find someone that believes in the vision. Yes, that's find, right. Have, find someone that, say, I'm, I'm standing on this word, and they say, I believe that too. Right. Come on, honey. Let's agree right now. You're getting out of this yeah. bed. You're going to come on. You're going to come out of this with a great testimony. Yeah. This yeah. COVID is not going to conquer you. A matter of fact, right. he picked the wrong fight with the wrong yeah. Christian, with the wrong church, because we're coming back stronger than we ever have. Yes, amen. Man, that's it. Doesn't Hallelujah. What you're facing, that's right. Doesn't matter what you're facing. No matter what situation you're facing, you will see victory. Agree in heaven. Agree with a believer. And man, miracles begin to happen. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, let's, let's go to point number Man, two. I already did the point number five. Point number two. <laughs> I love it. Second way to fight, fight. Someone say fight. Fight. Surround yourself with believers in number two. Believers. Get your faith from the word of God, not from your personal experience. Wow, that's good. What I mean by that is that's some good. people are convinced. They're convinced. They're convinced wow. that God doesn't heal today because they've never been healed. Right, right. They're convinced that God doesn't heal today oh. because they've never seen someone get healed. Wow. They're convinced that God doesn't, God doesn't heal today because maybe a church leader right. taught you we don't believe in that kind of stuff. That was for yesterday, but that's not the truth. No, no way. The word of see, you don't get your faith from your experience. No, from the you word don't of God. lower your lower the word of God to your experience. No, no. You raise your life to the word of God, God and you experience the word. If Amen. it's not happening in your life, there's nothing wrong with Jesus. There's nothing wrong with the word. There's something that you need to grow up in or get yeah. some greater faith. How many say there's right. something wrong with us? Yes, that's right. Exactly so right. so get your faith from the what word, of God. word from where from the word of faith God. comes by what hearing hearing the word. See, that's faulty logic yeah it is. um yeah. if i've there uh, i've never experienced it or seen it therefore it does not exist no. That, that's that's it's faulty logic. That's right, yeah, Just because you never experienced it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right, you know, right. if you talk to someone in a village back in a you know deep village, right. oh, yeah. and and you tell them there's you describe an iPhone, they're not going to even know what you're talking yeah, about. Know, yeah. But they could say, well, therefore it must not exist. Right. No, just because you never seen it and you never experienced it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Wow. It's there. That's Healing right. is there. Yeah. We serve a God that's still a miracle worker. Just because you haven't seen it yeah. doesn't mean it's not coming your way. Now, right. this man was was paralyzed man. for eight years. Eight years. Wow. He wow. could have did some deductive reasoning yeah, exactly. and talk himself out of yeah. this miracle. Say, yeah. you know, I've been sick for eight years, right. paralyzed for eight, year, eight years, in this room for eight years. Therefore, it must not yeah. be in, my, in the cards, the cards yeah. for me to be healed. Yeah. He could have took it another further with his deductive reasoning because some of us are so good at, exactly. of talking ourselves out of good stuff. Right, that's right. Man. Because it's easy to be negative. Yeah, it is. You know, you know, you just, when you when you're negative and you're and you have a pity party and you're giving into fear, you know what you're doing? Laying down. Right. That's exactly you're right. You're laying down. You know, it's kind of like yeah. you're throwing the fight. Throwing the towel. Yeah. Throwing the yeah. fight. Have you yeah. ever have you ever heard of that? Someone throwing the fight. Yeah. They didn't they, they didn't even get hit yeah. and they're on the ground and and the rest saying one two. <laughs> and they're acting all dizzy. They're throwing the fight. Right. Right. And some of us are acting dizzy like we got really hit and God said you uh, haven't even got uh, hit yet. Right. Get up. That's right. Amen. You're just talking yourself into laying down That's instead right. of fighting. So That's so he right. could have We're said, done, yeah. um, I never experienced it. Therefore, it's not in the cars for me to get yeah. healed. But he could have gone Thank farther and said, you know, I got some friends that are paralyzed, too, because us paralyzed people. We know who 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 who, who yeah. our friends are and we're hanging out with each right, other exactly. when we can. But the idea is I've never seen one of them get healed either. Oh, so therefore, them. God doesn't heal God paralytic doesn't people. Heal, yeah. Wow. He could have just went got, oh, yeah. got far. And, and so we start accepting yeah. conditions yeah, instead do. of fighting against them in the name wow, of Jesus. That's right. Amen. So, so don't get your faith from your experience that's right. or someone else's experience. That's right. Where do we get our faith from? From the, from word, the word of God. God. And you know why we don't walk God. in the faith that Peter, yeah. Peter walked in? You know, I was thinking, you know, yeah. um, I don't know if I have that faith to yeah, tell someone, get up. I know. You know. I said, right. well, how, I was how talk, did he have that faith? I was yeah, talking was to faith? someone, myself, yeah. not someone, myself. Yeah. And, and you, know what the, you know what the Holy Spirit told me? He goes, you know why he had that faith? Wow. He, knew, he knew me and he knew, he knew me better than you know me. Oh, he had, he had a, a deeper relationship. relationship with me. You don't know me like that yet, Marco. Wow, that's powerful. I, I, I told Holy Spirit, oh no, you didn't, Holy Spirit. <laughs> but you know what the Holy Spirit said? Come on. You know what? In America, we have superficial Christianity and we want to walk in power, but we don't want to go deep. That's right. We don't want to go deep in our commitment. We don't want to go deep in our holiness. Yeah. We don't want to go be deep in our sanctification. We don't want to go deep in our prayers. We want to be superficial, worldly Christians. That's right. That's exactly. We want to lust like the world, hear the same music as the world, go to the same dances as the world, act like the world, cuss like the world. But yet we want to walk in power and be able to say, in the name of Jesus. Man. And you know what Jesus said? That's right. In the name of Jesus. You're not even submitted to my name. How can you use my name like that? Submit to God. Then you resist the devil and then he'll right. flee. Oh, Lord, I'm talking to somebody here. That's good. That's good. So get your faith from, not your personal experience, 
Right. Don't wait till you feel better to start speaking better. That's right. That's right. I don't feel. You know. You know why some people can't get out of their mess? Yeah. All they do is talk about yeah, their mess. Talk about their mess. Yes, yeah, So this man, brings man. to point number three. Man. Declare your healing in Jesus' name. Say yes. it with me. Declare your healing in what? In Jesus' name. So Peter, I, Peter has some faith. He goes, yes, he Peter does. said to him. Wow. Peter said to him. Peter, what? Said to him. That's all he does is speak. Wow. Wow. Ananias, Jesus Christ heals you. Wow. You know, you know when, I, when he said Jesus Christ heals you, yeah. it's almost like the same exact story yeah. of Jesus healing a paralytic. Yeah, he's saying And tell him, thing. pick up your mat and walk. Yeah. Same exact. So you know what, yeah. what Peter was saying? The same Jesus, Jesus. that healed that paralytic yes. when I walk with Jesus is the same Jesus yes. that's going to heal this paralytic. Right. And the only difference is Jesus' word in my mouth. Wow. Jesus spoke it through his mouth. And now Jesus is speaking it through my wow. mouth. Yes, amen. Oh, right. man, someone needs to get some word in your mouth. Yes, get some word. Get the right. fear out of your mouth. Get the doubt out of your mouth. Get the COVID out of your mouth. Come on, get, get the news out of your mouth. Right. Get all that junk out of your mouth and get the word of God back in your mouth. Yes. And until you get the word of God back in your mouth, you cannot fight. Man. And you know, this is what I've been seeing. That's right. Because I'm like talking to people because, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm calling people that have COVID. And, and, I, and when I talk to someone, I could tell if they have faith or not. Because, because people, yeah, because the people that aren't walking in faith, right. they're victims, and all they do is speak about their symptoms. Wow. That's a rap right, right. there. <laughs> they're victims, and all they do is speak about the <laughs> symptoms. <laughs> that sounds good right there. We've got to loop that That's one right there. They're victims, and all they do is talk about the symptoms. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> they're victims, and all they do is talk about their symptoms. <laughs> That just got me beatboxing tonight. <laughs> no, that was good. That was very good. Very good job, Rob. So, if, if, I want you to think about this. If, if Peter does not say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, no one gets healed. Uh, yeah, no one gets healed. Got to and, gotta so now, wow. we got to speak our desired outcome, yeah, not our right. symptoms and our circumstances. That's right. It says, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Yes, yes, that yes. same... God does it releases his power through words. When God created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it into existence and then it was. God is still right now speaking, but he's speaking through you and I. Anytime that God wants to save you, for you to get saved, for miracles to happen in your mouth, you got to start declaring the word of God. Confess it out of your own mouth. No one can confess it for you. Some of us are defeated because your mouth has no victory in it. Your mouth only has problems and difficulties and the past and your symptoms and I got a headache and it's getting worse than the fever and, and I can't breathe and I got an anxiety and the COVID this and the COVID that and it got me and it's, it's killing everybody. That's right. And, I, and I'm not being insensitive. I'm talking about fighting against a spirit. Because if you don't fight it against this spirit, this spirit of COVID, it's a, it's a sickness, but it's a spirit of infirmity. It's a sickness, a spirit of sickness or infirmity. And what it does when it enters a body, it searches. I know how it works. It searches for all the weak points. Wow. If you have a weak back, boom, it attacks it. If you have weak lungs, boom, it attacks it. If you have a weak mind, boom, it attacks it. So what it does, it's looking for a weakness to get a hold of. Uh, so that's why... A lot, the most people that I'm talking to that got COVID, yeah. by the time they're done, they go, I am so glad I got it because it exposed the weakness. Exposed the weakness. Wow. I didn't realize I had that weakness yeah. and I'm a way better Christian than I was. Now, some of us got a victim mentality. Some of us started blaming. Some of us started thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Some of us got an anxiety attack, whatever it is. Yeah. I want you to get this. We got to overcome. That's right. Right. We got over, and how we overcome is just like Peter over. Declare your healing. Declare your victory. Declare your freedom. Declare, come on, declare it now. Declare your healing of your broken heart. Declare that your children will come back and be saved. Declare that your marriage will be restored. Declare that you're going to overcome. Declare that the job is coming. Declare that you're rich and not poor. Declare that you're strong and not weak. Declare that Jesus is there. Declare that Jesus is same yesterday today and forever declare get god's word in the middle of your situation yes amen declare declare it that's it i love it I, you know I when it. i go I, I just learn how to fight that's, that's all i'm right. saying i just that's learn exactly how to fight right. I, I just 
And my wife is a great spiritual fighter. She's a she's a ninja, top ninja. She knows jujitsu, everything in the spirit, karate, kickboxing. She knows she choke you out of two minutes in the spirit. Because she don't play with negative stuff. You know, and I don't play with negative stuff either. When I hear too much negative stuff, hey, 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 hey. Stop glorifying the problem and start bringing Jesus into this thing. Talking negative about people, negative about situations. You got to take the bull by his horns and fight. Someone say fight. You know how you fight? With your mouth, declaring the word of God. That's how Jesus fought. It is written. It is written. And number four, which is actually the last one, because we did number five last. This is what you do next. Someone say, take action on the word. Take action on the word. Um, start taking steps to activate your healing. Wow, that's good. Act like you're healed. Yes. Stop acting like you're sick. Yes. Get your body to agree with your miracle. Yes, that's right. Get your whole being moving towards your miracle. Yes, yes. That's right. You got to do that. That's exactly right. Yes, you do. That's exactly right. You know, when... when when I was going through symptoms, this is what I did. I took walks. I went in the sun. I was just going to hang out in the bedroom. I not, I not only did that, I, I started calling everybody. Hey, what's up? Hey, go ahead. And I started speaking life into them, victory. Them. I was fighting with them. Yeah. And, and I just started speaking the word, calling everybody. No one knew I was going through anything because you know what I started doing? I started acting healed. I had no energy and all that stuff. I don't care if I had no energy. I'm not going to let my energy tell me what to do. That's right. I don't have energy. Body, you're still going to get up. I take a walk in the hot sun. Right. Sun. <laughs> hey, man, come on. Let's learn how to take action. Someone say take action. Take action. Take action. It. it says in Acts 9, 9.34, it says, get up and roll up your sleeping mat. And he was healed instantly. Wow. Take action in the direction of your miracle. You need a job, take action. Start filling some applications. You don't feel good, there's a time you got to get up out of that bed and not let the COVID just take over like a blanket. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. You know, there, there's a time you got to do that. You guys, you got to take some action. Move in the direction of your miracle. You know, if, if you're trying to overcome lust, take action. Destroy every website. Get rid of your phone if you have to, but take some action in that direction. But get, some, get an accountability partner. Hey, you know, I've been watching pornography. I, I, it seems like I can't overcome it. Well, you're not going to overcome it on your own. Get some people involved. Admit you got a problem and tell people, hey, hold me accountable. I got to get rid of this thing in my life. It's polluting my mind. It's polluting my faith. And I can't even witness under this spirit. I got to get rid of it in the name of Jesus. If you have an addiction, take action. You know, we, we just had a, um, right now, you know, the church isn't open. We got some watch parties that came here as a result of the testimonies that we're going to share in a minute. But, but there was a lady that came here. She, she was, she's homeless right now because they stole her RV, stole her car at the same time. There was no place for her to go, but she saw some cars and she walked in here. She just walked in here. You know what that's called? Taking action. She walked in here and she goes, I don't have a place to live. And we took action. Thank God we're taking action. We just don't recognize those problems. We take action to fix them. So we brought her in. Right now, she's in a watch party with the women's home. Right now, she's off the streets. Why? Because faith without action is dead. It's dead. That's right. Love it. You know, when my daughter had cancer, you know what I did? She, she the diagnosed her with cancer. You know what I did the next day? I went to work. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. I went to work. I'm a manager, I have a responsibility. And, and I always say, some of us, you have to build our character because this is what happens. You use your problems as excuses for being irresponsible. Right, right, right. So, well, this is what's happening. It's just an excuse for not being responsible. Right. You know what I did? I went into my room for my daughter. My daughter, she was in the room. I go, honey, we're agreeing right now. That's what I told her. We're agreeing. She's four years old. I go, we're agreeing. She goes, daddy, what we're agreeing on? I go, this is what we're agreeing on. You know what the Bible says? If we ask God for anything and yes, we believe, believe, it will be done in Jesus' name. Yes. I go, so we're going to ask Jesus. I remember talking to her, me, me and her, just me and her. We're, she's my agreement partner. I go, baby, you're four years old, but I want you to understand this. If we ask Jesus for you to be healed, what's going to happen? She goes, I will be healed, daddy. I go, that's what's going to happen. You're going to be healed. So right now we're going to pray 
and the seed of healing is going to come in you. And we're going to speak it, water it, and then one day, honey, the doctor said you got cancer. There's going to be a day they're going to say, you have no more cancer. But we're going to receive it right now. Okay, baby? She goes, yes, daddy. And we prayed for her. And this is what happened. The next day, the reports got worse. The next day, it got worse. The next day, I mean, a week from there, all our hair is falling out. The week after that, uh, we have to do spinal taps. We've got to put needles in her back and pull fluid out. The week after that, her blood levels are low. Wow. But the week after that, they looked for cancer and they couldn't find it. Man, but, but I want you to, someone say fight. fight. Take and take action. So I went to work. And the guy said, why are you at work? I go, because my daughter's healed. I thought she's still in the hospital. No, I prayed for her. So if I believe that she's healed, why would I be hanging out over there prepared for a funeral? I'm not prepared for a funeral. I'm prepared for a resurrection. So I'm good. It's already in God's hands. So let me get to work. Yes, that's right. And you got to be careful because when you're going through a trial and you use the trials as an excuse for your, your execution for ministry, this is what happens. You'll be in trials for the rest of your life because the devil will keep putting them on you. He'll keep putting sickness on you. He'll keep putting, he'll keep putting trials on you, difficulties on you because it hinders you. Wow. And you got to learn how to fight. Some, someone say fight. Wow. And some, as for some of us, the fight is that, is that this is what's happening. The enemy has you not taking action. Wow. That's right. And you got to be aware of it because if you're, if, if we're in ministry. And when that means we're, we're, we got calls and God wants to speak to this person, call this person. He says, I don't feel like it. Take action. Overcome that because it's a character deficiency. And that's why we go through trials to get these deficiencies out of us so we can be more effective for God. So when he says go, we what? Go. go. Because if you don't do that, this is what happens. You get a habit of saying no instead of go. Wow. That's it. That's and you know what happens if you keep saying no? Wow. God will stop. This is what he'll, he'll stop asking you to do anything because he already, know, he already knows you're a no. So let me go to someone else. I'll be a yes. But I got an excuse for my no. It really, you know, my daughter's in the hospital with cancer. That's my excuse for my no. I guess that's not an excuse. That Sunday, I was there at church. I was there at church praising God, worshiping God. The pastor asked me, Pastor, would you, I mean, Marco, will you come up and share what's going on? I started speaking life over my daughter. And this is what I spoke. I went in front of the whole congregation and they, you know, they were on to pray for me, but I was careful because I didn't want no spirit of pity on me because that's a demonic spirit. Right, right. Getting people, some of us go through trials and you want people like, just, uh, I can't, how much, uh, I can't, God, it's so hard. Uh, and you want people just, you want people to baby you. We don't need to be, I'm, I'm not talking about the gift of mercy. We need to have some mercy, but you don't need babying in a battle. Come on, you need, you need someone to speak life into you. Yeah. Tell you to fight and get up. Like Peter did. Exactly right. He didn't say, poor you. Eight, how long? Eight years? Oh, oh, man. How do you do it? Tell me. He said, no. Ananias, get up. Jesus heals you. And then pick up your mat and start walking. And you know what he did? Instantly he did it, he took action. And when he took action, the power of healing was released. Come on. Be willing to do what you couldn't do and do what you don't even want to do so you can get results you've always wanted. You guys got that? Do what you don't want. Do what you think you can't do and do what you don't want to do so you get results you never, you've always wanted. I love that. So, so we did that. And, and I went to work. And, and you know what happened when I went to work? People started getting saved at my work. People I was praying for for 10 years. And you know how the story ends? The whole population of Lydia and Sharon saw Ananias walking around and they turned to the Lord. So the whole population. So you know what it means? You know what, you know what Ananias is saying? I am so glad I was paralyzed for eight years. 
Because these eight years, they were looking at me and they were looking how hopeless my situation was. I'm so glad that I went through that COVID, you know, because, man, it exposed some areas that I was weak in and I've come out stronger than I ever have. I'm so glad I went to that battle because I'm learning how to fight like I've never fought before. This is all good. Kind of joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations. I saw people get saved at work. I saw people get saved at the hospital. The power of God was moving. I saw people get delivered. It was a time of great ministry because they saw me going through a trial, but they never saw someone go through a trial and glorify God and still smile, still praising, and still fighting. I was fighting. Every day of my life. They said, was it easy? Oh, no. I'd walk around with scripture all day long. And when I thought, oh, my God, your daughter could die, I'd just bring out the scripture. No, no, no. God restores the righteous from the sick bed. I put that right back in. And then, and then another thought would come in. She's not getting better. And then I would say, no, by his stripes, we were healed. Were healed. And I just start speaking the scripture and declaring it. While at work, everywhere I went, it was nonstop God. God TV, TBN, yeah. Christian friends. It was just all God. That's what it has to be. That's you're finding about all. But anyways, you got it. So we got five. Surround yourself with believers. Get your yeah. faith from the word, not from your personal experience. Declare your healing in Jesus' name. Take action on the word. And remember, don't forget, it's all about God being glorified yeah. and soul being saved, not yeah. just you going through a trial. Wow, Amen. A Let's word. give God some praise if you receive that. Use this for your victory. At the end of this service, um, Mike, Mike, what we want to do is we want to get some prayer requests. Yeah. So at the end, get some prayer requests and yeah. we're going to be your agreement partners. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a prayer request, put them on and we're going to have a little prayer service after yeah, the, it's going to be it. after glow prayer service. So get ready for yeah, that. Let's, pray for right, let's go through yeah. some testimonies yeah, real quick. Some of these stories we have Richard here and I want to start off with Richard. We're going to answer three questions here tonight. And here's the first question. What were some of the symptoms you were feeling? I know you had an extreme case. What were some of the symptoms you were dealing with um, with COVID? Well, the main thing was the, the body aches, yeah. the fever, the, uh, gosh, just the pain everywhere, the, the headaches, the dizziness. And you went into a pneumonia as well, right? Breath. I, ended up getting a, a pneumonia. Yeah, I ended up getting pneumonia from it. Uh, the, the hardest thing was the, the feeling of loneliness, loneliness, like isolation. Like I would, uh, I would dread the nights because that's when everybody would fall asleep peacefully and I'm here wow. battling all night, being yeah. tortured with this intense pain that you I can't make go. Went up to temperature went up to one, 103, wow. which finally took me, got me to the hospital. So, uh, yeah, the symptoms were physically really demanding, yeah. but the loneliness part, yeah. the just feeling like I was alone. Yeah. Um, that's, that was the worst part. So as you're dealing with these symptoms, and this is a kind of a dual question, a, a, a two-part, you're dealing with all these symptoms of loneliness to pain, fever, pneumonia. And Pastor Mark had mentioned weeks back, maybe even months ago, that really COVID has a voice. It's not only a physical thing, but it's a spiritual battle. Yes. Did you hear a voice? What was the COVID voice telling you? Absolutely. Um, the voice started out really vague, and then it, when it got to the really worst point it was just like okay i'm not messing around anymore you have to know that you, you're not getting out of this you wow. can't get out of this so this the voice is telling you you're not getting yeah out this of extreme this. pain you can't there's only one way out of it there's only you have one option is to kill yourself and i was i was like no i don't believe that so the voice told you the only way you're gonna get out of this COVID, yeah, all this I mean, pain, you have to kill yourself i was yourself. in so much pain i was this close to believing it but no i have a god that's greater then he has the last word. That's right. You know, and so I woke somebody up to come in agreement with me. I woke up my wife, so let's pray. Wow. We, I need someone to agree with me. I'm, I yeah. thank the Lord for healing me in advance. Man. And she prayed. She's yeah. a prayer warrior. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, and yeah, yeah. She's, and that's what Pastor Mark was saying in the points. We got to come in agreement with people. And your yeah. wife came along. You got an agreement, started to pray. And that's powerful. And Rebecca, um, you were dealing with some severe symptoms as well. What are some of the symptoms you were dealing with? And then what was the COVID voice telling you? you know, I want to say something yeah. before we go into that. Is that when we're talking about a voice, we're not talking about like we're crazy hearing voices, but we're talking about when we're in spiritual warfare, the enemy attacks your mind. Right, right. It's just the way it is. And, and that's why there's always, uh, the enemy wants our minds vulnerable. Yeah. And that's why he wants us to get high, yeah. get drunk, meditate on the wrong thoughts because your mind will start tripping. Right, right. And it gives, ac it gives access 
It gives access for ideas and thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So the enemy is always looking for a weak moment. And the reason, the reason a lot of people are experiencing severe spiritual warfare, especially under COVID, uh, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So what he does, when you're weak, he speaks. Yeah. And for some of us, we're, we're weak. And what we started doing was going the things we shouldn't be going to for an escape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your escape, the devil told you, you got to escape, is suicide. suicide. But I want you to think about this. How, how did the thought of suicide come? I really believe that the thought of suicide, the enemy already had it planted. And he goes, I'm going to use it now and finish him off. Wow. You know, but instead of finishing him off, he was, the enemy was exposed. You rebuked that spirit. You got an agreement. Surround yourself with an agreement partner. You guys came against that thing. And that was your moment of what? Turn around. Turn around. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it was funny because I called her, I think it was the day after, right? The, the day, day of. The day of. The day of. And you were in the hospital. Were you in the hospital? In the hospital, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I called you in the hospital. Called me in the hospital. Wow. And all the nurses... When you, as you were praying, they all stopped, stopped what they were doing and prayed. Wow. Yeah. And then I flatlined. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> now now you can joke nurse, about it now. No, no, no. Because <laughs> one of the nurses stopped what she was doing. No, I'm but it was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was amazing to see them just kind of, yeah. you know, pay respect and, and uh, That's powerful. pray along with us. God, wait, and, and you know what? It was wait, more and more God powerful. God being glorified. Yes. It's like the story we just read. Man. Because well, awesome. I'm sure they see, all, they see that yeah. all the time. And yeah, exactly. how often do they see prayer? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They hear prayer. They see yeah. prayer. Hear it. So, they heard they the really prayer. needed it. That's powerful. Yeah. I didn't even know it was on, I did, they were hearing yeah. my prayer. And Rebecca, Praise what were some of the symptoms you were feeling? I know you had an extreme case as well. And um, what was that voice telling you? But first, what were some of the symptoms you were facing? And my, it was just a pounding. I had body aches. I had chills. I had shortness of breath, and I had a very severe cough. Wow! You even yeah. said too, like you felt something like a like, like shattering your neck or something. Yes, some when pain. when it actually hit me, um, I was having the the headaches, and I literally felt something right here at the back, in the back of my by by my neck. Yeah. And it literally, when I turned, it felt like it just shattered, and I had that it image i mean the image the vision came to me that it was just like something dark wow. it was like and it just went all the way throughout my whole entire like body a, like a, almost like an evil spirit that came upon yes. you yes so when you deal with these symptoms and you feel like this evil spirit come upon you what was this voice telling you this covid voice this spirit what was it telling you death death you were gonna you that were gonna I was, die that i was gonna die that i was not gonna pull through it wow so you have this pain, evil spirits telling you, you're not going to make it and you're going to die. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Because I had the, oh, I'm sorry. And I had oh. the pressure on, on my chest, the heaviness. And so that's what it was constantly just telling me. Oh. And I want to say Man. something. This, this is exactly how we fight a battle. Don't try to get your evidence from your emotions and your symptoms. You can't wait to start feeling better, to start speaking better. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta say, okay, I'm literally feeling this. The spirit of death is coming against me. And you know what the devil wanted? An agreement partner. Yeah, that's exactly right. He wanted you to agree with that because I really believe if you agree with that, you know, we have a brother, um, Tony, that's in the hospital right now. And um, he's, you know, he's fighting. He's getting, he's getting better every day, but he's fighting. And, and the doctor said this, bring in all kinds of pictures of his family, friends, vision, all the things he likes to do, what he loves. And they have this, he goes, bring it in because he has to be able to look at that and see his future. So even the doctors know the spiritual side of COVID. And he's saying this, if they have no vision, they do perish. And that's what they didn't want to do. Give you a vision of dying, get you to agree with it. And I really believe he would have took you out. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's exactly right. And Candace, um, I know you're, you're, you're wasn't an extreme, the sickness, but um, what were you going through? What were some of the symptoms and what was the voice telling you when you got COVID? Um, well, I had an extreme fever for a couple of days um, and I knew it was something different because it was really, really hot this time. Um, what I was really experiencing was really in my mind. I just felt really isolated. I felt abandoned. I felt just forgotten almost and just really um, pushed away. And I, all, I'm, all, I also felt like almost really dirty and like kind of disgusting. Like I can't go out my room. I can't do anything. You know, I can't go anywhere. Like I felt so rejected and just isolated and, and you alone. Live, and you live with your family. And yeah. of course, they, they didn't want to spread throughout the house. They had some yeah. children. So you actually stayed in your room um, for how many days? 
days. Were you there for 14 um, days? Or? No, 30 days a month 30 ice days. in my room. Yeah. Wow. So you felt out isolation, mm -hmm. not being accepted. Yeah. That the, the enemy was, you, you're dirty, you're yeah. not clean. Disgusting. I just felt also like I'm not going to get out of this. My wow. test is going to continue to be positive and positive. Like it was really scary and it was a lot of fear I was yeah. experiencing. Right. Like I'm not going to get out of this. My test is going to keep saying the same thing. Right. Man, and Richard, you know, we're kind of like the second question. You kind of answered it, but I want to emphasize it again. How did you fight this voice? I know you grabbed your wife. What did you guys do? Did you guys pray? Did you guys, I know you're a worshiper. How did you fight this voice off that kill yourself? Well, um, it was easy. Actually, it was a lot easier than I thought. I had so much support yeah. already. I, a lot of the, my brothers and sisters from the worship team, they, they were constantly in contact with me every day. How are you doing today? You. And we were all praying for each other and lifting each other up and wow. checking on each other. So there was a lot of support there already. Yeah. So the devil had no chance. That's he right. tried. He tried really hard. That's right. And then I have That's my wife. That's what Pastor Marco mentioned, the word, surround yourself around believers, yes. agreement, right. and then yes. we see miracles happen. And my wife, I don't know how she, she did it. I mean, yeah. she was starting to feel the same symptoms Strong. But she pushed through and took care of me and the, the kids. And it, I don't think she ever, she just didn't give it a chance to overcome her. That's right. They, they had no idea what they were yeah, uh, exactly. up against. When they, you know. <laughs> That's powerful, man. That's exactly yeah, right. So, I'm proud thank, and it's supported. And, and I want to say yeah, something yeah, about, yeah. again. Yeah, that's why fellowship is so important. Yeah. You know, um, you know, one will chase a thousand, two will chase two thousand. You know, three is a cord that cannot be broken. But you know, we come together as a family. We could get through anything together. It's when we, we when we allow ourselves to be offended and then we isolate, or we we go into a self pity mode and we isolate. The enemy, don't let yourself isolate. Reach out. Um, not everybody even knows what you're going through. And don't expect someone just to call you because sometimes they don't even know. Or they might be going through stuff themselves. Exactly. There's a time, just make, be mature enough to fight your battle. And even when you're in a battle, reach out to other yeah. people. There's always someone that's hurting more than you. And if you can learn how to minister in your trial, the devil will never mess with you. He won't mess with you as much. You say, no, no, I, every time I, I, you know, something happens, they get even... They get louder. They get more effective. They they get more intentional. They they share their faith. So, but fellowship with each other is strong. It, it helps us. It yeah. really helps us. If you've been coming um, for the church in a while, join a Power of Twelve group. Um, you could go on the app. It's a care group. That 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 group is there to take care of you in times like this. Give you a call. Um, text you. It's really a care group to help you. Yeah, buy you groceries in these times. But join a P Twelve. Go on the app. Go and sign up. We'll call you, give you more info. Um, but Rebecca, um, how did you how did you fight that voice? The voice is telling you that you're going to die. You're not going to make it. How did you fight that voice? Well, it actually, when I when my battle really became real was when I was felt that I had to start calling nine one one, and it was at that point when I started hearing it that okay, it's I'm it. COVID was going to take me out. But then it was like all of a sudden it was like God's voice broke through and it was that small little quiet still voice that you know you know when it's your Abba Daddy talking to you. Yeah. And when I heard him when he said he goes be still and know that I am God. Wow. And and I I'm like okay, okay. So I held on to that the second day, the second night again, it came back again the same thing. Wow death and it was going to, that I was going to die, wasn't going to make it. And I'm ready to call 911 and God's voice broke through one more time. It broke through again and telling me to be still. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stand on what you say, letting me know to be still. And he was coming at me with scriptures. So it was the scripture, was the word of God that got me through it. It was wow. the word of God That's that got me through it. Declaring Amen. the word of God. Declare the word. Declare the word over the situation. Amen. That's Very powerful. Good. Candace, how, how did you fight the, that voice? That voice telling you you're alone, um, you're dirty. How did you fight that COVID voice? Um, just like what Brother mentioned, encouragement and just the church really reaching out. I had a particular phone call. It was um, a night that I was feeling really sick and I laid down and I just felt defeated and I got a phone call and 
it was honestly so encouraging. It was amazing. She really just reminded me um, that I'm a, I'm a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives in me. I'm perfectly fine. Like I'm not sick and COVID cannot live in my body. And it was really just so encouraging. And um, from that point, I remember saying to myself, I'm going to get tested again. And I had developed symptoms towards the end of quarantine. Um, I had like sore throat, achy bones, but I was like, I don't care. I'm still getting to get tested even with symptoms because I know I'm healed. I know I'm going to get a negative test. So I got the oil out. I anointed my body and I said, Lord, I thank you that COVID cannot live in my body. It cannot dwell in a place of worship or in my room. And I just literally declared healing and I, I got a negative test. So it was amazing. She took action, began to pray. Man, that's powerful. And even the phone call. Um, maybe you're listening right now. Oh, that so listen to the Holy Spirit. Even to call someone a text, yes. it could save someone's life and encourage them. That's powerful. And, you know, it could save Man. someone from committing suicide. Yeah, exactly. You know, just a call. That's you know, right. th thank God he had a wife yeah. and he had a team around him. Yeah. But let's say he was alone, oh. without any team and without a wife, and he was in a dark room all by himself yeah. with that kind of pain and hurt. It, it would. It might have. It would have. Yeah. He would have started fantasizing, how do I do it? That's how do exactly I do it? And we go to the next step. Exactly. But one call, and church, you know, um, when you, even when you're not, it's sometimes easier to understand people's pain when you're going through some pain. Yeah. Um, but we want to get even more mature than that. Yeah. And that's why we got to stay in the spirit. And not, I'm not saying that's not mature. I think that's good. That's revelation that we're able to have some compassion for those that are struggling. But I want to get to the level that even when I'm not going through pain, that I'm sensitive to people's hurt. Because it's so easy. Uh, I was talking to someone that was that was declaring the word, but it was kind of in an arrogant way. You know, and I talked to him and I go, you know, there's probably the way you're saying it, it's almost like you th you're saying it in a way that you feel you're better than them, you know, because you haven't got it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but but we gotta be careful with that because you don't want to be hyper spiritual. You want to be sensitive and spiritual, yeah. and that's loving and that's merciful. That's exactly and, and and I want and when I talk about how to fight a battle, I've been fighting battles for you know since I was a little kid, and learning how to fight in the spirit. So I, I I'm in a place that I've learned how to fight, uh, and I want to and I teach people how to fight. Right. So I'm I'm the kind of person if you're going through something, you want me in your corner. I'm not going to baby you. I'm going to help you fight through it, and we're going to overcome on the other side. You know, we're going to get through this thing. You're not, you're going to, come on, declare the word. Let's pray together. Let's agree. I'll be your agreement partner. Let's do this. Um, but it took years to get to this point. And the Bible says you, you that are strong help those that are weak. You don't put down people that are weak. Oh, you should be stronger. We don't do that. What we do is says, let me strengthen you. Let's get through this together. We can do this together. And, and together we're in this. And that's how we fight. And so even when you get strong, stay humble. Because if you get strong and prideful, you're not strong. It's when you're humble and meek and you're strong, now you can help people. Because you could take on their burdens like if they were your own burdens. And they could feel that you're taking on that load. And that you're calling not because you're a minister and you want to do one more ministry thing to do list. It's not about that. It's about right now I'm calling because God put you on my heart and I love you. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. We're going to get through this together. That's exactly right. like, what is God telling you? What is he showing you in this time? What do you want me to agree with you on? Yeah. Beautiful. And we're all ministers. So, yeah. so take your trials and use them for the glory of God. Yeah. And even your pain and hurt, use it as a place to gain compassion for other people that are going through things. And, and there's people all around us as we're walking. Be careful that you're, I, I just, I got, I'm talking about myself, yeah, that I could just uh, overlook, overlook people's right. pain just because I'm not going through pain. I'm too busy because I don't have pain. Yeah. But when, when you go through it and when I went through it, I started realizing, wait a second, yeah. there's people out there hurting and. Yeah. And, you know, so I spent my time just calling people, you know, and, and I think it woke me up to a whole nother level. But also it showed me weaknesses within within me. And like I said, that seven day yeah. detox came out of it oh, man. because I realized, oh, man, I was I had so much junk in my life. I, I, had, I had all kinds of YouTube videos and TV and, and I was just I just, you know, news and too much junk. And I realized no wonder I, I don't have no peace. I, I, like I was struggling with that peace. Next day I was kind of like, something's missing. And what was missing was my intimacy with God. 
And I got that back for sure. And I feel I'm so much better for any trial I've ever been through, including COVID. It's, it's been it's been great. I am grateful for every battle I've been through. And if you're going through it right now, thank God and everything. Start glorifying God. Trick the devil. Start praising God and thanking God for your situation. Well, I thank God I got COVID. What? What? No, thank God for all your trials because I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to come back and beat you over the head, devil. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I'm going to overcome this with the blood of the lamb and I'm going to defeat you with the word of my testimony. Yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going through a test, but I'm coming out with a testimony. Amen. That's full show. That's right. And the last question really fast, is kind of going into that, Richard, um, after COVID now, how did it change you? Who are you now because of what you went through with COVID? What did God do? Well, he revealed, he revealed something that I hadn't really paid attention to for quite some time. He told me, look, look back, look behind you. Look what you have gone through. Look where I stretched you. Look at, look at how your faith has grown. Because wow. I didn't see that. I just was just walking yeah. with God. And uh, sometimes you don't look, realize, realize how much you've grown. But he's, he said, take a look at where you've gone. You've crossed this rickety bridge with a storm trying to blow you off. Man. And now you're on the other side on solid ground. Wow. And, and then I took you even further. Look how much, look how much more I stretched you. So I feel that much stronger. And, and when he revealed that to me, I was like, oh, my gosh. Man, I'm, I'm glad I got COVID. I'm yeah. glad I, got, I went through this. I was too comfortable for a while. Right. I needed wow. to be, sh I needed to be, to be shaken be up. To be it, it showed you that you right. have the faith. And, and you know what God was saying? I trust you with this trial. You're going to do fine. And you did it. You and did. God, at the end, you know what God said? I'm so proud of you. And you felt you that good, affirmation. Awesome. I mean, I saw the Holy Spirit. He didn't put you down. He said, no, 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 great job. Hey, um, how could you use that, um, what you've been through, to minister to others now? You know, I used it right before I got sick. It was a, it was a Wednesday night. We, did, we, uh, we, we were doing service at an altar call. I was on the worship team. And one of, a friend that I haven't seen in a, in a while, one of, one of the first people we met when we first started coming here, him and his wife uh, split. Wow. And uh, they've been going through, you know, back and forth. And he was in the men's home for a while and then out and out, oh, back in and out. Yeah. He's kind of fighting with himself. But he was here and I was led to come down and I, I sat down. You know, I, I didn't even take my guitar off. I yeah. sat down with him and I paid with him till the end of, till almost everybody was gone. Wow. And I ministered to him like everything that, <laughs> pretty much everything I went to, little yeah. did I know I was going to be practicing what I preached Man. the following week. That's powerful. So, you able to minister and help them now. Yeah, and That's now awesome. I have friends at work that are, they have family family uh, members that are yes, going through it. Walk them uh, through yeah, it. Yeah, I'm walking them Praise through it. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Let's, uh, let's end it right now and yeah, let's yeah. Um, begin to um, pray. Yes. You know, pray. For, let's start praying. Yes. But let's, let's close it out. And then yeah. we, I want to do, right after this, I want to start praying with some actual prayers. If you have prayer requests, send them in on Facebook yeah. or send them in on YouTube. Yeah. And we'll get some of them and we'll go ahead and agree with you. And we're going to be your agreement partner. Yeah. And this is what we're believing for. As we're agreeing, whoever to agree on earth, it shall be done. Yeah. My father will do it. We're believing that that's going to be your moment. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to be your break. It's going to be your healing. It's going to be your turnaround. All you need, you're one agreement partner away. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and be your agreement partner today. And even the people in your home, yes. get them involved um, in your agreement. But before we do that, let's just make sure everybody knows this Jesus. Yes. That saves, yeah. that heals, yeah, if you're watching, that's with us yeah. in the middle of our storms and difficulties. We'll go through yes. them, but I'll be there with you. Yes, Jesus wants to be right with you. You're going through this trial, going through a battle. But more importantly, above everything, the greatest miracle of all, is your sins being forgiven. So if you're watching us right now and you're saying, Pastor, man, I would, I would love for my sins to be forgiven. I would love to go to heaven when I pass away. You know, right before service, or actually this morning, I went to a house today and um, one of our members, um, she works hospice and she calls the office. She's calling for a pastor. I go to the house and it's a 19-year-old um, young man. He got a brain tumor and he was passing away. So the family, we don't know, is asking the nurse, do you know anyone, a priest, a pastor, that could come pray for my son and pray for the family? So one of our members, she's a hospice nurse, she calls me, I went down there, and the whole family was there, uncles and nieces and nephews, and I prayed for Adrian, he's the 19-year-old that was passing away, and I told all, all the family there, I said, you know what, one day, all of us are going to pass away.
But here's the most important thing. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? And at that house today, I led Adrian through a prayer and the whole family said the sinner's prayer at that house. So not only did Adrian get saved, the whole family got saved. And that could happen to you today. If you're here and you're watching, maybe you're at home right now, maybe you're at work, you say, Pastor, I want to be forgiven. I want that Jesus that you guys are talking about. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. If you could bow your head and close your eyes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And the Bible says, all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So say this prayer right where you're at and you're going to be saved right now. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all the wrong that I have done. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a follower. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. I am born again. I am saved. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you are saved. And if you could look on the screen now, there should be a little tab there that says, igotsaved.com. Go to igotsaved.com. I want to help you with your walk with Christ. We have some great classes to help you with your walk with Christ. If you just said that prayer too, the next step is baptism. So when you go to igotsaved.com, we'll help you with your steps with Christ. But congratulations if you just said that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. Awesome. Well, let's give a hand to everybody that was here. Yes. Thank you for sharing your testimonies. It was, it was awesome. And I pray that every one of you are, were blessed today. And, and we want to let you know we love you. God loves you. We're, we're, you know, we're all in this together. You know, and there's a whole world that's full of fear out there, and they're hurting. And this is our time to not really isolate. Of course, of course, we're you know, practicing social distancing and, and doing what we can to do our part. But make sure you make that call. Um, your co-workers, people are holding things in and they're struggling and they're depressed and some of them are suicidal. And a little love, a little hope. You know, I went to dinner the other day and I invited the waitress to church and, and she goes, man, I need this so bad. I go, we're all going through it. She goes, I know. So maybe she'll be here this Sunday. But the idea is people are hurting out there and maybe you're hurting. Reach out. Let somebody else know that you're 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 struggling. That's okay to admit you're struggling. You, you don't have to be try to be so strong. We're stronger together. And 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 reach out and then someone's gonna and then you guys talk and then you agree and say, look, and by the time you're done, I really believe this, both of you will be stronger. That's just a, who knows when you reach out that they really needed you and you thought you needed them. You just never know. Let's do this together. So how how we're gonna get the um, the requests? I'm gonna put them on the screen. Okay. So we can pray. We, what we want you to do is we're gonna have a few minutes. Oh, there oh, they there are. They go. It's trying to come up. Okay. Now. A matter of fact, let's just do it now. Yeah. Let's, let's do, do it, it now. Let's okay. Do it. Let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna start agreeing with you. Elvia, um, Uncle George is in the hospital right now, so I'm gonna pray for Uncle yeah. George right now. And you know what's so great about God? He's everywhere at once. Yeah. That same Jesus that Peter yes. spoke of, I'm going to speak right now to George. George, yes. Jesus heals you. Yes. George, he heals you right Jesus now. heals you now in the name of Jesus. Alvia, we agree for his healing now. We agree for a complete turnaround. Yes. You're the great physician, Lord. You go in that room, fix his blood, fix his heart, fix his lungs. Thank you, Lord, for healing. You know everything that's not right. And I thank you, Lord. You're our creator. You're the creator of the universe. And by your stripes, we're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, see Amanda Dominguez for my sister Ashley's marriage. Yes. We lift up Ashley's marriage right now. We speak restoration. We speak healing in this marriage in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against this marriage will prosper. We speak restoration and healing in this marriage right now in the name of Jesus. Okay, we, we got Melinda and breakthrough in my marriage. You know, and we're thinking about, yeah. you know, we're thinking about COVID. We yeah. had one sick. Yeah. And then this is the other problem we have is huge relationship yeah, problems. Right. 
And, and Jesus is the master of relationships. And yeah. I think this Sunday I'm going to be talking about what's missing. Yeah. And what's missing is the love of God. Because wow. with the love of God, we can get through anything. So yes. Melinda, I'm going to pray for an invasion yes. of the love of God in your heart and your husband's heart. Because th there's no... You, to, God created you and you could do this together. And I pray for a miracle. Jesus, right now, I pray for Melinda. I pray for her husband. And I just thank you, Lord, that right now, Father, you'll bring restoration. You'll bring... They'll forgive each other. They'll turn to you. They'll turn to your word. They'll repent of all the division. And they'll say sorry for the things they've said. And I thank you, Lord. Bring her husband back to the borders of his home. And I thank you. And bring them into unity so they could be, they're going through a test, but they could come out with a testimony and even a marriage ministry. In the name of Jesus, we receive that Jesus. now. Amen. Healing right now, Michelle De La Cruz for my sister Olivia has COVID right now. Yes. There you go. We're going to pray for Olivia right now to be healed. We lift up Olivia right now for by your stripes we were healed. We speak healing in Olivia right now. Yes. COVID, we command you to go in be the healed. name of Jesus. Be healed, Olivia. Spirit of fear binds you right now in the name of Jesus. A complete healing and restoration in Jesus' name in her body right now. All right, Tori loves Thank you, Father. deliverance for myself and my daughter from depression and anxiety. Now, you got, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Everybody here, everybody at home, agree right now. Yeah. Let's bombard heaven for Tori Love and her daughter. And we pray, Father, who the sun sets free is free indeed. We command the spirit of depression and anxiety to go in the mighty name of Jesus. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Tori, what I want you to do right now with your daughter, renounce depression. Just say this, I renounce depression. If you're at home and you're suffering depression, say it with me. I renounce depression and anxiety. And I receive the spirit of the Lord and I receive a sound mind and I receive power now and peace that surpasses all understanding. Spirit of depression, go. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, with your love come in. Healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Tori. Yes, thank you, Father of Gabby Calhoun for breakthrough in my marriage. Wow. We pray for Gabby right now for breakthrough in her marriage in the name of Jesus. The word of God says what God has brought together that no man separate. We declare the word of God that no separation, no divorce, restoration, and healing in her marriage right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay, we're going to do a few more. Pablo Martinez, my wife's uncle, has had a heart attack earlier today. You know, you know wow. what this is doing? Wow. It's making us all aware of what's happening. That's right. And this is what they found out under COVID. The divorce rate has like tripled. What's going on? Because people are home yeah. without God and they have to face their problems now and families are falling apart. Right. Jesus is the only answer. He's the only one who can change our hearts. So let's pray right now. But let's pray for the uncle. And then we continue praying. Uh, we pray for our uncle now, Father. Yeah. Wife's uncle. We pray for him now that he'll be healed, Father. Be with him in the hospital. It's scary to have a heart attack. You feel like you're all alone, especially in this COVID season. That you feel an overwhelming love to come in that room. Overwhelm him with your love. Overwhelm him with your comfort. And fear go and healing come in Jesus' name. Let's yes, lift up Anna right now. Pray that I can break out of pity, sickness, grief, weakness, and anger. There it goes. We come against the spirit of pity right now yes. in the name of Jesus. We come against sickness. We command you to go. We command grief to leave Anna right now in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough, weakness, and anger. We command the spirit of anger to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Receive tonight your complete healing and victory tonight. Renounce those spirits Renounce of anger. It fear. Yes. Let them go. Renounce yes. them in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. And command them to go in the name of Jesus. And yes. repent of all unforgiveness. Let it go. Honey. Yes. Um, we'll do two more. Christopher yes. Gaetan. For my son Christian being tormented. tormented by demons and wants to hurt himself. And I want you to think about this. This is happening wow. in the home right now. Yeah. That there's a, there's a dad that's struggling with his little boy or young man at home. And the kid wants to kill himself. He's torn by demons. 
You know, tonight you might go home and just have some dinner. But they're dealing with a real serious demonic struggle where a demon's trying to tell his son to kill himself. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Christian now. Father, the Christian will call upon you. And we break the communion or the conversation with the spirit of suicide now in the name of Jesus. Christian is hurted. But I thank you, Lord. Do a miracle. Heal his mind. Heal his soul. Set him free. Invade his heart with your Holy Spirit. Give him peace. Let him know you love him in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus for Christian. Christian, be healed in Jesus' name. Spirits of torment demons of yeah. suicide go. we command you go. to go in Jesus name Walking right now in the name of Jesus yeah, let's pray for Veronica Robert. Veronica for my friend Cynthia got diagnosed with cancer wow. wow let's pray for Cynthia Father lift up Cynthia right now you know her situation God and we speak to that cancer right now to leave Cynthia's body in Hallelujah. the name of Jesus cancer we command you to dry up in the name of Jesus so Lord give Cynthia strength give her peace Father, she's not saved. Bring salvation to Cynthia and her family. Give the doctors and the nurses wisdom. But we thank you. We call upon you, the highest doctor, to heal Cynthia of this cancer in the name. We come in agreement with you, Veronica. Your friend is being healed right now in the name of Jesus. And, and Christopher, what I want you to do, um, send us your phone number. I think we probably have it in our books anyway, but send it. Yeah. So that way we can have our youth ministry get a hold of Christian and, and spend a little time with them. So we can help him get through this. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard for him. It's hard for you too. And I'm so, we love you. Um, yes. I, we could do this. And I think we probably need to have a, a yeah. I think we need to have a prayer service. Yeah, we do. Um, sure. Just even online like this yeah, so we could all we join do. in. And I'm, I, we're going to do one pretty soon yeah, within this month. Yeah, let's do it. And we'll do a prayer service maybe on a Sunday night. Yeah. And, and you can send in all your prayer requests. And we'll do an hour of power. Well, and, and, and I want you to do this at home. Continue even writing these names down and praying for them and standing. And we've done all the stand. We're going to continue standing. Come on, we're, we're a team. We're a family. We're a church. And if one part of our body's hurting, we're hurting. We're all hurting. We need each other. So we love you. God bless you. Remember this. If God's for you, you're okay. There's nothing that could come against you. And for those that have lost someone, we pray for God's presence to be with you, to comfort your heart. Yes. We pray again for Water of Life, the loss of pastor. And I know um, Generations Church lost their pastor. And, and I know Victor Raj, I talked to their pastors. They lost, um, they lost two of their leaders under COVID. And we pray that God will comfort them and strengthen them right now. And, but we thank God that for us as believers, to die is gain. Let's not forget that. We're living for eternity. And while I'm here, it's going to be Christ. And if I'm going to die, it's going to be gain. Yeah. But while I'm here, I'm going to do everything I can to reach just one more soul, right. to love one more person, disciple just one more person. Yeah. That's what we're here for, to glorify God and see souls get saved and disciple them to become followers of Jesus Christ. Love you guys. Love you guys. God bless you. We're praying. Pray for us. We're praying for you. Love you guys. Have a great, great night. Have a great week. We'll see you Sunday.